Now, this is the Temaport expansion project. It is costing as much as $1.5 billion. It is an ambitious project, some have said, and it is said to be unprecedented in the history of the port industry in sub-Saharan Africa. It involves the building of a breakwater and an access channel harboring deep water berths to accommodate larger vessels with sophisticated port handling equipment and will provide world-class harbor infrastructure for the next 100 years. That's the story of the Tema port on paper. Off the books, there is a serious dispute between the current workers and the private firm behind the project, Meridian Port Services. The workers say they are convinced the project will lead to the loss of as many as 400, uh, 1,400 jobs, leaving the two in dispute. Today, President Akufuado met with the workers' union to try and resolve the standoff. We'll get to hear details of that meeting shortly. But first, here is a report filed by Joe News' Joseph Akable after he visited the project site last week. The Tema Port expansion project launched in June 2015 was tagged as key to increasing trade flow and general business activities in the sub-region. The project is being executed by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, representing government and Meridian Port Holdings. The Trade Union Congress during the May Day celebration claimed many workers risked losing their jobs. Our analysis showed that when the new terminal commences operation in June, with the monopolistic rights given to MPS, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and other operators at the Tema Port are going to lose huge revenues that may lead to the collapse of many container-related businesses. This will translate into massive job losses in the maritime industry. GPHA may declare over 1,400 workers redundant in 2019 alone. Mr. President, if the contract is not reviewed and MPS commences operation in the new terminal in June, Ghana will surely lose millions of U.S. dollars in revenue. CEO of Meridian Port Services Limited, Mohamed Samara, however, disagrees. MPS is relocating its services. We handle 90% of the containers inside the port. We're relocating the services into this platform. As you have seen, this platform is much bigger than that one. So we will need more staff. Also, our outsourced services, truckers, and this, they will need more people. We need more security men. We need more tally men. We need more cleaners. Every job scale size, we need more. So we're going to employ more people. Not only that, we're going to operate 24-7 because one of the efficiencies that the, 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 the Customs and the Office of His Excellency asked us to do is to work 24-7 like all other ports in this world and create a, an efficient platform for that purpose. So by working 24-7, we need more immigration, more uh, standard board, we need more food and drugs, we need more customs for sure, that's the bulk. We need more people to man the scanners and what happens after the scan. We need to create an avalanche of jobs, you know, for the... Sub he argues Ghana is positioning itself to play a key role in regional trade. People. So there is huge direct and indirect, you know, jobs for the stakeholders of this port. Let alone this. If you find 20 new yard cranes and you have at least two people mounting each crane per shift for three shifts, then you can see that straight away even that one translates into a number of jobs. You look at the ship to shore cranes, a number of jobs. You look at the new uh, trucks that will be added on, a number of jobs. Look at these buildings, cleaning areas, a number of jobs. We currently in the range of 2,000, I would say, direct and indirect jobs through our additional the expansion will, among others, make it possible for the port to berth some of the world's largest vessels and also significantly increase the speed with which freight is offloaded and loaded. Industry players believe speed with which freight will be processed at the port will enhance its attractiveness and efficiency, which will in turn positively impact on trade between Ghana and its landlocked neighbors. That was a report filed by Joseph Akable when he visited the area. Well, let's get on the phone nice now. I've got Samuel Ahin. He's a representative of the workers on the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority Board, and he attended the meeting with the president. He joins me on the line. Mr. Ahin, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Tell us how the meeting went, first of all. Huh. Well, um, what I can say for now is that we had an issue as 
organized union. Uh, we presented our issue to the public to know what is actually going to happen. And we had an invitation from the father of the land. I'm talking of His Excellency, the President of the Fourth Republic, Anna Adedankwa Kufato. We honored his invitation today, and I think that uh, uh, whatever transpired at the meeting, for now, as workers, we say it is okay for us now. I mean, it is it is better and it is best for us to attend or respond to his call. Mm. That is all what I can say. As for the details of what transpired at the meeting, I don't think it should be out now. But as organized workers, organized union, organized labor, we were happy about whatever transpired there. Besides the fact that you're happy, let's take the concerns that you raise and try to understand the concerns. As public, of course, everybody um, is interested in what happens at the Ghana ports because all of us have a stake in there. So let's begin to address the concerns that you raised earlier. It had to do with job losses. You said that about 1,400 jobs were going to be lost if, the, if this particular um, project goes on. How exactly were those jobs going to be lost? Oh, I think you've understood with the, I think Mr. Usu Kranting, the General Secretary for MD, who explained to you how this 1,400 workers, permanent workers, it is permanent workers, if this concession agreement is being remained as it is, and it being implemented, that mm. is what is going to be affected. Um, we have made the analysis. And the analysis, I think, uh, the, the asset now that I'm talking to you, you have it. Mm, okay, so let me, let's me let go through it one after the other. First of all, what he said was that there was going to be the mon what he called, he described as the monopolistic rise of MPS. When you talk of mon monopolistic rise of MPS, mm -hmm. he was referring to the exclusivity clause in the concession agreement. Has that been changed? What? Sorry? Has that changed now? It hasn't changed. Okay. That yeah. has not changed. So, no, so, I'm, I'm so you were describing... I'm explaining Please the go mon ahead. Mon monopolistic clause in the concession agreement. Do go ahead. Yes. It talks about the clauses, some clause in the concession agreement, which point out the exclusivity right for MPS. You know, Terminal 2, where the MPS are, are now occupying. Mm -hmm was bought for container purposes. You are moving from Terminal 2 and turn over Terminal 2 to Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. You are moving from Terminal 2 to Terminal 3. Mm. And the exclusivity right simply says that GPHA cannot undertake any container services at NPS 3, except vessels that are calling to Terminal Port with 200 containers. 200 plus one containers and above to go to MPS. Okay. Yes, that is the, the, the monopolistic aspect. And, and let me further by saying that, you know, in, in this way, we need competition. Mm. We need competition in every work that we do. If you are operating Terminal 2, which is broad purpose of container services, and you are moving from that, that terminal to Terminal 3, and you are depriving your competitor, for that matter, GPH, for, for doing any container services there, except vessels with only 200 containers, 200 or less containers. And you know, these modern vessels, they come with huge lot of containers. It means that indirectly, you are depriving GPH to use the services of MPS, uh, sorry, uh, to, use the, to utilize the services of Terminal 2. The purpose of which it was being bought. Okay. And that one means that in handling containers, there will be no competition between the two. I mean, the the, the GPHC and then NPS. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk of that monopolistic, it means that the chunk of container works should be handled by NPS. NPS. Which is one of the major concerns that you have. Exactly. Exactly. Has exactly. that been addressed? Well, that is what I said that we had a meeting with our president, the first gentleman of the land, and the discussion has been so good for us. So I for take now, it that that has now. been addressed? Sorry? I take it that has been addressed then? <laughs> My lady, don't push me to the wall. I am not. Uh, don't push me to the wall. Not we at all. have a way of doing our things. 
when there is an information that needs to be given out there, we we'll try our possible best to let you be in the know. After all, what we are doing, you are educating the public about what we are talking about. Some do not even understand all these things. But for now, the best thing, and the best I can tell you for now, is that we had a meeting with the father of the land. Mm. And as organized union, we find the meeting to be very fruitful. You are happy with the result. I'm going to wrap up this conversation. I'll end with this question, by the way. You asked one of the concerns raised by your representative at the um, May Day March was for a review of the contracts because of all these issues that you've raised, the monopoly that you think MPS will have, the collapse of container businesses, which you indicated as well. You asked for a review of the contract. Is that going to be done? It's all part of the details of today's outcome, and sooner than soon you will know what is going to happen. The MPS had a response to your initial uh, uh, your initial you know, uh, concerns that you'd raised. They said that, first of all, they'll be relocating the services, uh, the, which means that there's going to be more trucks uh, the, or there's going to be uh, the need for people who man these trucks. There's going to be 24-hour operation. There's going to be about 2,000 jobs created. Are these true from your perspective? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's up to them to say all these things. I know, you know, you are moving from an old terminal to a new terminal. So all whatever you, you let it be out there is a projection or a forecast. Do you get me? If your projection will be okay, it means that the ship calling to the new, con the new concession area must increase. Mm. If there should be anything otherwise, what will happen? So I will say all oh, what they are saying is a projection. It's not a reality on the grounds. Is your, your concern as well not a projection? We have a lot of, con a lot of concerns. Which one are you referring to? The ones that we've just is discussed right now. Is it 1,400 workers exactly. that are going to be laid off? Yeah. And that one is only the permanent, irrespective of the, I mean, uh, I mean I'm not considering the other companies that rely on GPH. You know, we have a Steve Dor, private Steve Dor companies mm. who, who, operates under GPH. If there are more vessels for containers, we give some for them as well to do. We know, you know, and so, and so, if the 1,400 workers, permanent workers that are going to be laid off, irrespective of other allied services, which, like what I told you, MP, uh, what do you call it, the private, private civil companies, they have invested in doing that job. But if the containers are no more coming, they're all going to be folded up. Okay. But we are talking about the exact thousand for the if that one is in dispute, I think that the, the analysis has been made critically. Mm. And if you are if you are doing a services where you're going to lose between seventy and seventy four million dollars annually, how can you take care of your workforce? So Ms. Ahin, I take it that I, I appreciate the, the fact that you do not want to talk to us about exactly the details that went into the resolution of this matter when you met the president. But if I said that you had concerns with job losses, you met with the president, the issues you raised have been, con have been addressed at your level, but there are still going to be job losses if we stick to your analysis. You have taken the president's word for it, even though you know that people are still going to lose their jobs. Is it fair? My sister, you see, <laughs> you want me to push to the world to tell you exactly what transpired at the meeting, but uh, I must be very honest with you. We are more than satisfied when we met the father of the land. Even though That's people that. are going to lose their jobs. Well, that is how you may, you may, you may, you may say it. But I, once I was privy to that meeting, <laughs> maybe my understanding will be, will be quite different from your understanding for now. So at what point job, do you for, intend... For, you, know, you know, let me, let me say this. As okay. for job losses, mm -hmm. my sister, it is something that we should all take it with all seriousness. Which is why we're asking you these questions, so that we are all sure. Because when you have the issues, you raise it in the public. So the public is interested. We all want to know. So we're raising this issue to be sure that people are not going to lose their jobs after meeting with the president. Let me summarize what I want to tell you. 
after meeting with the president, I told you we are satisfied with whatever he told us. If the resolution from the presidency comes, and still there will be job losses, the organized union will resist that. What it means is that we, there is going to we, be a we, follow up. We, you see, we want coexistence of MPS and GPH. Okay. At least for, from 2004, they've been working in the post. We see them as our, our sisters in the maritime, our brothers in the maritime industry. There hasn't been any, any, any qualms here between the workers. No. We've been so cordial. And let me say this we don't have any problem with any worker of MPS. No. No. We don't, we don't have any problem with them. We have problem with the concession agreement and the issue where there is going to be job losses. Something must be done. I think that the, the, Mr. Samara, the CEO of MPS, knows that there's going to be job losses. Whether the figures are bloated or not, he knows there's going to be job losses. And okay. that's one the union will resist, no matter the figure. Okay, we and you will, you will kick against we it. Want, we want the coexistence of MPS and GPHC. That's all. Okay. That's what we've been doing now. So as far as you're concerned, as far as your union is concerned, you are not going to condone, tolerate, allow, accept any form of job losses. Exactly. But you are not sure as of now that, that, that this is not going to happen. We are, we are waiting for the, the, the action of the president as we had a meeting with him. So what I, t what I get from this interview and what my viewers are getting is that there has been some assurances and you are hoping that that assurance will, the, the follow-up to that assurance will be that people will not lose their jobs, but you are not 100% sure. I am not saying this. You are telling me that, my I'm, sister. I'm, and this is what I get from the interview we've just had and from what my viewers All right, are you know, opinion are like gnosis. You can form your own opinion. Very well said. But, but, but as I've told you, I want to re-emphasize this, that as organized union, MDUTUC and the local union, we will resist any attempt for implementation of this concession agreement with associated or related job losses for GPH staff. That one, it will never happen. Mm, without the reviews that you're asking for. Exactly. Very exactly. well said. We'll say a very exactly. big thanks to you. But before I let you go, I'd like to find out when you intend to share the details of this meeting you had with the president with the rest of Ghanaians who are interested. Um... Give us about a week or two. A week. Very well. We'll be a here. Week or two. I will remind you. Thank you very my much. Phone, my phone is always available. Yes, sister. If Thank you want you. to assess me, you can get me. Samalahin is a representative for the, on the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority uh, Board, which met with President Ekufado this morning. The meeting ended not so long ago, and you've heard him say there has been some talks. They are satisfied, but of course, they are not yet sure. Not 100% sure whether or not there won't be any more job losses.